Thank you so much for the uh, warm introduction and for having me uh, this afternoon. Uh, my name is Mina and uh, I'm one of the fellows right now in the Advanced Heart Failure uh, Transplant and Mechanical Circulatory Support Program uh, over at Toronto General Hospital. And I'm delighted uh, to share my presentation with you today entitled The Value of Equity, Diversity and Inclusion in Translational Research. I have no disclosures. So for today's session, um, I'm hoping to answer the following questions. Firstly, what does equity, diversity and inclusion or EDI, as I'll refer to it during this presentation, look like in research? What can researchers and teams do to increase EDI in their projects? And what plans of actions or next steps can be taken to strive for better EDI in research? So before we get into that, let's ask ourselves, why does this matter? And I'll take an example from the inequities in heart failure care. Uh, so heart failure inequities expand across race, ethnicity, and sex. And where the research is more robust is actually from the United States. And uh, within the last few years, we've learned that African-American and Hispanic patients have had a higher prevalence of heart failure than Caucasian patients. African-American women have a higher prevalence of heart failure than any other intersection of race and sex in the United States. African-Americans of both sexes are disproportionately dying from heart failure compared to other races and ethnicities, particularly among the younger groups, which are ages between 35 and 64 years. Racial and ethnic minorities receive less than 40% of total annual advanced heart failure therapies, heart transplants, and ventricular assist devices, or VADs. And racialized women receive less than a quarter of advanced heart failure therapies. And compared to men and Caucasian patients, women and racial or ethnic minorities are less likely to receive appropriate medical therapy, and that includes implantable cardioverter defibrillators or cardiac resynchronization therapy with defibrillators, and to be included in clinical trials. So I'll take a pause here and, you know, I wonder about this. Is this something to do with our patients? Is this something to do with our research programs? And the piece about the clinical trials really got me thinking. So why is that the case? What are the barriers? So a consistent theme I came, uh, came across in the research is that uh, many of the barriers relating to inclusion and even diversity are the same as those that inf impact trial design and delivery in uh, various different research programs. And the nuance is really around how these barriers present among different underserved groups. Uh, and this is often unique to the po population's particular circumstances or backgrounds, uh, beliefs, needs, and even access. Uh, so what are some of the barriers that we've seen? Uh, so there's access to research or trials. Uh, we have some of our patients that live in remote communities that are technically fly-in. They're not able to access the large academic centers doing research and trials uh, on diseases that affect them specifically. There's lack of trust, and this is embedded over years of issues within navigating the healthcare system or receiving healthcare. There's issues with language and communication. Some of our patients have English as a second language and some of the materials that we're using don't allow for them to understand what is happening to their healthcare or their participation in particular research projects in the language that they can understand or information they can assimilate. So how can we address these barriers? Uh, well, it's a two-pronged approach. So there's EDI considerations at each stage of the research process. And some of the key questions that we have is, how is the research planned and how is it carried out? What are the research subjects and who are they? And who is impacted by the research that is being done and what population of patients does this disease process affect the most? There's questions we can ask ourselves for our research teams. So what kinds of themes can we explore? who works, who collaborates, who contributes to the research programs that we're doing. What's the research environment like? Who are we recruiting? Who are we helping? And how do we build and maintain a high performing and diverse team that can reflect the needs of the patients we're hoping to serve? So the approach to addressing these barriers uh, looks at five different aspects of the uh, research projects. And that includes the development of research questions, the development of research study and design, looking at the ways that methodology and uh, data is collected, uh, aspects of analysis and interpretation, and then finally in the dissemination of results. So when it comes to research questions, 
we can take a look at our literature reviews and think about have we really considered uh, some elements of EDI. So what key words can, be, uh, can we be using in our literature reviews to actually gain a deeper sense and a broader knowledge of who might or might not be impacted uh, or contribute to the research that we're trying to do? Uh, are certain diversity factors like sex or age or gender uh, or ethnicity and or their intersections known to affect the phenomenon of interest that we're studying? Uh, what are the relevant knowledge gaps? Have any previous studies failed to address them? And what can we do to bridge that gap? In terms of the uh, research study design, we'd like to ask ourselves, will members from our population or community of interest be invited to help uh, with shaping the objectives of the study or any part of the study in general where appropriate? And which diversity factors could be embedded to strengthen the study? And why would we consider these um, or any of your factors at their intersections? Uh, does the proposed research protocol follow any of the best practices on how and why and whom research is to be conducted with um, and how people are impacted by the type of research that we're doing, especially if it takes place on a land sacred to them, such as our patients uh, who are Indigenous? In terms of the methodology and data collection, a couple of things to consider is how can we ensure that our research participants actually reflect the diversity categories included in the research design? If the analysis is based on existing data sets, is there potential for bias due to the cultural and or institutional context in which the data was generated? And for indigenous research, how will the data be collected and monitored? Uh, and conducted using established guides that are curated by Indigenous peoples. And importantly, how will bias be monitored, mitigated, and recorded in every step of the way? In terms of the analysis and interpretation, uh, where appropriate, have we really presented our da data uh, disaggregated by the diversity factors? Have we evaluated whether diversity factors and or their intersections have an impact on our outcomes? And where appropriate, have we statistically tested our data to determine whether the magnitude of effects is different for each diversity factor, such as gender or sex or ethnicity, uh, and their intersections? And if the diverse groups are involved in the research program, will they have the opportunity to participate in the interpretation of data where appropriate, or review the research findings before the completion of the proposed research? And that sort of speaks to engagement of our communities as appropriate. In terms of disseminating the results, what means of dissemination will be the most effective in reaching those who will use or benefit from this research? How will inclusivity be integrated during dissemination? Will accessible formats be used? In what languages will they be offered in? And does this dissemination plan consider these sorts of languages, not only just English and French, uh, but other languages uh, in our very diverse population in the greater Toronto area, across Ontario and across Canada? So what about the team and what kinds of investments do we have in creating a diverse team? How are we recruiting uh, trainees from equity deserving groups? Where are we finding them? And how can we mentor them along the research process? And that's a personal interest of mine in the work that we're doing with the uh, diversity and inclusion in cardiology education, uh, where we feel that uh, diversifying the workforce starts out uh, in training uh, young learners and young scholars very early on and helping them along a path uh, throughout their training. And uh, while difficult to see here, but uh, essentially this is a, an action plan or a steps forward blueprint of what we can do, uh, starting off with diversifying our team members, uh, inviting individuals from equity deserving groups to participate in the research, understanding different ways of communication, whether it be through language or through different means, whether paper form or virtual formats, uh, and engaging the community most importantly in a manner that is safe and culturally sensitive with a background uh, training before that occurs. And uh, so with that, I'd just like to summarize um, some important and salient points that I hope I've communicated along the way this afternoon, uh, that considering equity, diversity, and inclusion in the research process, uh, where it's relevant, really promotes research excellence and it makes it more relevant to society as a whole, not just a subset of individuals, um, especially uh, uh, considering the uh, jarring statistics I shared in the beginning of the talk. It also makes the research more ethically sound, rigorous, reproducible, and useful 
useful across our uh, multicultural population. And when um, principles in equity, diversity, and inclusion are not considered where they are relevant, it could actually be harmful and it could disproportionately affect a group of patients that may benefit from the uh, research that's being done. And finally, applying an EDI lens really means systemically examining how these diversity factors, such as biological sex, gender, that's sociocultural, race, ethnicity, age, disability, sexual orientation, and even geographic location, um, can impact the research questions, the study design, its methodology, its analysis, and finally, the interpretation and dissemination of results. Uh, so with that, I'd like to conclude, and uh, I believe mine is the last session, so we can uh, open it up for questions. Thank you.